Good morning. Thank you to the mayor's office for asking me here today. I'm Shoshana Summer, and I'm president of Eckington Parks and Arts. I also serve on the boards of DC's Urban Forestry Advisory Council and Green Spaces for DC. Eckington Parks and Arts is a community-driven nonprofit supporting a sustainably greener and cleaner DC through efforts and advocacy of volunteers. We coordinate neighborhood cleanups, educate and perform outreach, advocate for a greener community with improved air quality, activate our green spaces through events, liaise between neighbors and city services, and improve Eckington and nearby neighborhoods by bringing attention to existing needs and our shared vision for the future. Dependable city services and responsive city agencies are foundational to the success of our efforts. We need these basics so we can aim higher and achieve more. Through our past work, we've developed important relationships with many partners. Our fiscal sponsor, Green Spaces for DC, Noma Bid, Eckington Civic Association, Capital Nature, DPR, DDOT's Urban Forestry Division, and Clean City DC, among others. In 2023, we're contributing to new and cohesive efforts with our ANCs and our Ward 5 Council member. And now we look forward to partnering with the mayor's office and all our DC agencies as we get back to the basics. And on that note, I'd like to introduce DC Mayor Muriel Bowser. Thank you, Shoshana. Thank you. Well, let's give Shoshana a big round of applause and thank you for that introduction. Uh, it's a beautiful spring day uh, in Ward 5 and all, all across Washington, DC, where we continue despite very, a very windy weekend to see cherry blossoms throughout the city. Uh, our teams are playing baseball, um, our, our little league teams, the Washington Nationals. Uh, and another spring tradition for us is to uh, begin uh, a focus on back to basics and how we are out in our neighborhoods. Uh, so just like a lot of people are doing their spring cleaning, uh, that's kind of our version of back to basics. I want to acknowledge our great D.C. government workers who are with us, Everett Lott and the entire team at DDOT. Let's give them a big round of applause. Uh, Timothy Spriggs and our DPW team. So let's give them a big round of applause. The Mayor's Office on Community Affairs, hello. And um, the Mayor's Office of Community Relations and Services, or our Mokers Office. Let's give them a round of applause. So for us, spring cleaning means a lot of different things. Uh, for DDOT, for example, we will be ta talking about our spring launch of Pave DC and all of the things that we have been able to accomplish in the last eight years um, with PAVE DC, including and especially eliminated all, eliminating all poor quality roads by 2024. We have a year to go to hit our goal. And by the end of last year's paving season, we were at 88% of goal, which is fantastic. And we're on track to reach it. Um, so we are also, uh, in fact, um, excuse me, we, since we launched Pave DC, we have paved 500 miles of roadway, which is about half of our roadway network. We also launched Ali Palooza eight years ago. Uh, and since then, we have restored more than 1,100 alleys since 2015, uh, and we have restored more than 300 miles of sidewalk. So let's hear it for our paving team at DDOT. And while uh, DDOT and all of neighbors will see, so mind our construction uh, and follow the rules so that our teams can be safe while they're doing um, their work. Team DPW will also uh, be at work making sure that the city uh, is safe and clean. So DPW began residential street sweeping uh, in designated neighborhoods in March. Uh, and this month, DPW begins seasonal mowing and cutting on areas in our medians and triangle parks. 
Uh, and I know that a lot of people will also uh, like this, that every residential alley is set to get at least two alley cleanings in the coming months. Thank you, DPW, for that. We also know as, as residents we have to do our part. Uh, so we want to know that spring is coming. We're getting lots of rain. And we have responsibilities to keep our own yards uh, and tree boxes trimmed uh, and neatly cut. So we know we'll do that. Uh, and we also have responsibilities in our alleys as well uh, to make sure that the areas, any grassy areas outside of our yards are free of weed and debris. Uh, so one of the investments that we're also very excited about in uh, my budget proposal that is before the council as we speak uh, is a $3.4 million program uh, to replace super cans on a regular schedule. Uh, and so this $3.4 million that we will plan to invest every year will allow us to replace a uh, entire ward, uh, the super cans. And so there will be an eight year cycle. That's good news. We are also inviting you uh, to work with the Office of Clean City to clean up your own blocks, alleys, and neighborhoods, and uh, work with us through GPW's Helping Hand Neighborhood Cleanup Program uh, in, across all eight wards. So these are just some of the things that we want to do to keep our city clean, uh, to make sure that our streets, alleys, sidewalks, and trees are in states of good repair uh, and to invite you to be a partner in keeping DC clean and safe. So with that, I'm going to invite directors Lott and Spriggs to come up to say a little bit more about what's happening at DDOT and DPW. Uh, then I'll take a few questions. Thank you, uh, Everett. We've been joined by our council members. So before I turn uh, to our, our directors, let's hear from um, the Ward 5 council member, Zachary Parker. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am not going to be up here long, but I'm really excited about this idea of getting back to the basics because what we know is building healthy communities uh, mean making sure streets are paved, the roads are clear of debris, that trash is picked up regularly, and I've been working uh, tirelessly with our agencies uh, to make sure that Ward 5 neighbors can depend on quality city services. I want to thank the mayor uh, for coming out today to Ward 5. Um, I want to thank Director uh, Spriggs, uh, as well as Director Lott for being here as well. And I'm looking forward to elevating the concerns of Ward 5 neighbors and looking forward to the investments coming down uh, to ensure we can continue to build healthy communities. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Director Lott uh, to talk about the uh, initiatives uh, from DDOT. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council Member. So spring is here, and we are getting back to the basics with the launch of DDOT's annual paving season. Six years ago, Mayor Bowser challenged DDOT to ensure that all roads across the city are all in a state of good repair by 2024. So with the launch of the 2023 paving season, I am happy to announce that we are very close to meeting that goal. Today, 88% of all district roads under DDOT's jurisdiction are in a state of good repair. We've been able to maintain our continued progress toward this goal by paving, uh, following our paving plan that we've modeled called Paving DC. Paved DC uses road quality assessments and community requests to first address the streets that are in the greatest need and the highest priority to the community. This process has helped us navigate our way through the most critical repairs and build annual plans that maximize our use of contracting resources and personnel. Pave DC has also improved transparency in our paving program. So you can follow online to monitor our progress across the plan and find out where we're going to be next. You can even find a full list of sidewalks, alleys, and roadway markings listed for completion during the upcoming year. Our roads and our highways are the backbones of our transportation system. 
They enable us to travel to work and to school, to shop at local businesses, and they also allow us to route to our favorite places across the district. Paving season is not just about fixing potholes and resurfacing roads. It's an opportunity to, for us to invest in our city's infrastructure and ensure that our transportation system remains efficient and reliable. Paving also improves safety by ensuring the traveling public has smooth, clearly marked routes that support wayfinding across the district. And with our paved DC plan, we make it just as safe and just as convenient to walk, to bike, and to take public transit as well as and as easy as it is to drive. All of this has been possible and made possible by the continued support of our mayor, Mayor Bowser, who dared to issue what many deemed an impossible challenge to move the district into a state of good repair. And our dedicated team of DDOT personnel who've come to work every day have made it all the better and made it easier for, easier for us to achieve this goal. So remember, over the next few weeks and into the summer and even, even early fall, we'll be getting back to the basics through our paving and our paving plan here in Washington, D.C. So please plan for your commutes because we may be tackling a block in your neighborhood very soon. So thank you, Mayor Bowser, and thank you to the full and the whole DDOT team. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Mayor Bowser, for eight years of your extraordinary leadership. I want to acknowledge Director Lott this morning and appreciate as a partner agency as we move forward to share our goals to make a positive impact within the community. While winter is definitely a critical challenge season for DPW, but we just experienced the best snow season ever. Uh, <laughs> it arrived the spring to keep us the busiest. Spring is where our crews put down their rakes and pick up their brooms. As of March 1st, we have resumed street and alley cleaning opportunities. DPW street and alley crews cover over 112 routes within the district's eight wards. Our graffiti cleaning team are back on the streets removing graffiti, tagging the illegal posters. This past year, we did over 320, over 3,200 removals. We know many folks are planning this year's this, their yard for the spring. I just want to remind you that your yard waste collection is now a year-round program and you can schedule yard waste through 311. Just contact 311 by phone, email, or through the 311 app. In addition, our traditional spring operations, DPW has several new initiatives we plan to kick off before the end of the season. We will soon announce our District Zero Waste DC plan which would guide the city towards diverting 80% or more to the city's waste away from landfills and incineration by 2032. And last this spring and, in, and into the summer season, we will also launch the district's first curbside compost pilot with a limited number of households signed up for this participation. DPW is proud to work alongside agencies and continue to continue our work towards a cleaner, greener, more resilient DC. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, I think we have a big piece of equipment that we're going to get to see how it works. But before we do that, I'll take a few questions. Any questions? Any press questions and any community questions? Yes, Mark. Uh, so. Um, Mayor Bowser, maybe for one of the directors, could you define what state of good repair actually looks like, what people can expect, and then just kind of on uh, the metrics that you're, you're saying about 500 miles of road, 300 miles, can you kind of compare that to how many miles of sidewalk there actually are, how many sure. miles of roads there actually are, and, and my last is, when you say by 2024, December 2024, January 2020. Budget 2024. FY. Budget the, the budget year. Yes, okay. our so FY. September, September 30th. 30th. <laughs> okay. All right. And so how many miles of sidewalk and roadway? Sure. I'm going to ask Everett um, to talk about that, but um, I'm also going to ask him to refer you to some of our budget docs. I think we're going to go back six years, not eight years, um, where we made the decision to make a substantial budget investment in paving. Um, and at that time, uh, DDOT 
uh, forecasted, and it, it seems like they're pretty much spot on, how many dollars it would take and how many years it would take to reduce, to take roads, um, and you'll see um, in the documents that we share with you, all the roads that were in red, which means they were a poor quality road, to get them to fair, to get them to excellent. And so obviously the, the plan was to eliminate all the ones that were marked poor quality uh, and to keep them on a cycle so we don't get any more um, roads that are rated poor quality. Or if they are poor quality, they're in the queue um, for restoration. So let me ask uh, Everett to talk to you a little bit more about the numbers and refer you uh, to those budget, budget docs that show over the last six years how we've done it. Thanks, Mayor. <clears throat> So, Mark, your question about a state of good repair. Uh, when we're looking at our roadways, looking at our sidewalks and our alleys, um, again, we want to make sure that they're free and clear from any type of, of hazards or hazardous conditions. And we're talking about our roadways. Um, you know, several years ago, we had a, a big challenge with potholes, um, and that's one of the calls that we do not really hear or receive very often anymore. And a lot of that is attributed to, again, our state of good repair in terms of uh, repairing the potholes, but more so in terms of repair. Uh, uh, repaving our, our roadways um, throughout the District of Columbia. Uh, the same thing when it goes to our sidewalks uh, and our alleyways. Uh, to eliminate any type of tripping hazards, um, a lot of the sidewalks uh, here in the district, some may be uprooted by some of the trees. And so um, our teams are actively going out, making those assessments, uh, reviewing the sidewalks, reviewing the streets, as well as the alleyways to re remove any of those type of hazards. And how many miles of roads, sidewalks, alleys, um, I have to refer you to um, to our, our uh, paved DC plan. You can actually see all that information posted. But approximately for the roadways, it's about a thousand miles that we are responsible for um, as a district entity. And my last question, Mayor Bowser, brought reminded me of a question: What's the cost of all this to to get us back to the mayor's goal? Um, cumulatively, uh, I'm not sure what the total cost is, um, but we're happy to provide that information to you offline. Thank you. Uh, and Mark, in um, as you know, most of, and the director will uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that we have a ward by ward investment that historically has been a uh, even, um, uh, equal, I should say, distribution every year um, to every ward for streets, alleys, and sidewalks. Um, we're not talking about trees and lights today, although I always include them um, when we're talking about streets and and alleys and sidewalks because those are the things that people encounter when they walk out their door. Uh, and when you talk about back to basics, that's what they wanna make sure that the government has uh, a plan to address. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, on transportation, but uh, Friday you announced two open streets events, which was less than the year before, and I heard some disappointment on the number of events, but um, a lot of the things that people pointed out was the police cost to block off uh, streets and, and uh, you know, different intersections, but uh, can you talk a little bit about the budget challenges with putting on those events and why having, you know, police big vehicles is, is important to, to do for these events. Sure, uh, and I'll ask Everett, and the DDOT team has done a, like a really amazing job with open streets, and we continue to be very proud uh, to advance open streets uh, program uh, for the district. Uh, and just like we've done with everything, every agency, every initiative, uh, we're trying to be really efficient with how we spend our resources. Uh, and that's how we uh, arrived where we are with the number that we uh, arrived at. Uh, we continue to, to think about ways to make sure all of our special events are safe. Um, and if there are ways to use fewer resources, especially police resources, uh, that's going to be necessary uh, for all of our special events moving forward. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, your, your lawyer's office received a second complaint against your former deputy mayor. I'm just wondering if you have any comments of, uh, about this. I know, you know, what actions you took when you found out about this second allegation and if you've heard of any others since subsequent to that. Mark, as you know, we're directing um, all questions about that investigation to the MOLC. Um, and that's all I can really say. 
topic. Have you received the letter from Congressman Comer to appear yes. before? Yes. Can you tell us uh, your plans for that? Is it May 26? Is that the date that he, that's the date he, he said? I don't think that's the date. I think it was earlier in May, uh, and we're re reviewing that now. So you hadn't accepted his invitation as of yet? We, we haven't really sat down to review what's, what's entailed, but I plan to do that this week. Thank you. the Housing Production Trust Fund that, uh, report that came out over the weekend. Um, this is the first annual report through the Housing Production Trust Fund that your administration has filed in seven years. And firstly, I was just wondering if you could explain why annual reports had not been filed between 2016 and 21? You know, I'm not exactly sure, but I think, as I recall, that there was some audit that was underway. An audit of... Of, uh, of what exactly? I, I'm talking off the cuff, so let me have the department get back to you on that. I, I, I don't recall why it was an issue. Okay. And, and secondly, uh, the report showed that while the, the fund was meeting goals for some income brackets, it was still not meeting the mark on the 50% requirement for the 0 to 30% income bracket. Can you explain why that's not happening and if you intend to make that a priority in the next round of proposals this year? Um, did you write that article? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I know that the director has already addressed your question. Yes, but I'd appreciate your perspective considering she only started in January and you were there for the duration. Well, your addressment, your question was about what's next, and I think she addressed your question. She was also citing, you know, your vision. So, I'd, you know, hearing it from you, I'd certainly appreciate what you intend to do. Um, what I intend to do is meet our 2025 goals for affordable housing in the district. Does that include prioritizing investment in 0 to 30 percent housing? Uh, I think if you look across the spectrum of what we do, as the director you know, has already answered you, we have a lot of tools, uh, including vouchers, including permanent supportive housing, including our career map pilot, which is helping people with very low incomes um, raise their incomes and in scale off of public um, benefits programs. So I think what's important for all of us to do is to look across the spectrum of our tools to see what works the best for each income bracket. Um, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, we also intend to advance policies that make sure that we can have um, production of units that support teachers and firefighters and police officers that don't fall in uh, to 30 percent of below, but are still people in our city who need affordable housing uh, and who we need those employees like maybe even the employees standing behind me uh, that can uh, afford housing uh, in the district. So our, uh, our um, approach to affordability has always been across the entire spectrum. Do you intend to lobby for any changes in the law then? If necessary. Law. Well, if necessary. I know that the council made some changes to the law last year, um, and so we would need to review that. Uh, but what I want to make absolutely clear is, in, and it's been much ballyhooed uh, before about the investments of the in HPTF, all go to affordable housing, all of it. And so I want you and your reporting to, in, to make that perfectly clear, uh, that we have made historic investments with HPTF and other tools. Per capita, best in the nation. Uh, and it goes across all income. So we have uh, addressed very low income, no income, in fact, uh, in all of our, our homeless services production that we've been able to do associated with our Homeward DC program. Uh, the council has made pretty historic investments in, in vouchers, which we work with them on, which really are supporting very low income people. Uh, we have low income tax credit programs. So all of these are tools um, that support their production of very, very low income housing or support the income maintenance or income support for people with very low incomes. Thank you. Mayor. Thank you. All right. Thank you much, everybody.